Part of the swarm is that shot in the arm that we're all really excited about. Obviously when Wings Liberty came out, um, we StarCraft players weren't really sharing the stage with anybody. It was more Warcraft 3, World of Warcraft, and whoever else was interested in shiny things uh, kind of came down to Wings of Liberty, and it was this mega culture, this mega game. As far as uh, HOTS goes, it's it's very balanced. They they added enough new units, but not too many, in my opinion, to completely change the game. They were really focusing on a more mobile, fast-paced game, particularly with Zerg. They buffed a lot of our lair units. There's a huge diversity in strategies right now. Every matchup has different builds that it had before. Um, while the same builds still exist, there's still 10 more builds that you can do in every single matchup. It really kind of switches things up and it has completely shifted the metagame as far as like styles and what we're seeing. The changes they made, they, they were actively towards what I think would be a more fun game, what would definitely be a more active game for the fans. Uh, as far as being able to resume replays, finally in, in Heart of the Swarm, I do think it's going to have a big impact on uh, the way I train. Let's say you thought, hmm, I could actually, I think I could make better of that situation. And you both replay it and you do make better of that situation. You can keep perfecting and perfecting what you do. Yeah, resume from replay for tournaments is just absolutely great. This is just basically the answer to disconnects. Like, you no longer have to have an admin decide, well, did he have enough of an advantage? You're all together, you can all watch a replay and all talk and stuff simultaneously, whereas that definitely makes it that definitely makes it a cool experience for people that aren't in a team house and it makes the experience less lonely too. And I think Blizzard are definitely listening to the community in more ways than one and doing it in a really, really good way too. It's always been a big deal back in, in the days of Brood War for us to be like, hey, I beat this guy, come check it out, let's watch it together. And then they hop in the replay with you. By having the convenience of being able to uh, just you know across the internet group up with uh, a few teammates, a few practice partners, a few buddies, and go over uh, one or two replays and kind of get uh, some key feedback is really going to affect a lot of teams in a very beneficial way. As far as StarCraft in general, this is only a good thing. There's, there's only people that will benefit from it. There's not going to be that one guy on the darkest corner of, of battle net saying, well, I, I like to watch replays by myself. There's not going to be that guy. So everyone's much more happy. Adding skins and allowing players to customize their experience with StarCraft II and Heart of the Swarm in my opinion, is the closest we'll get to what a lot of people have been asking for. Let players stand out from the rest, not even purely out of skill or like how they play, but just of how they want to look. I think that's, that's a unique concept and definitely makes me feel more original. I was personally a Walker 3 player prior, and I loved seeing the icons and portraits. I remember fighting long and hard to get my Tassadar avatar for a thousand games as Protoss and Wings of Liberty and actually being quite happy about it. So I'm a little bit worried that this might be too good of a thing for me as well. For me personally, um, I think it's great. I think it's great that Blizzard are doing this. And I think that they could, at a very low cost to them, reward a very large group of people and make them feel more committed. I like to be able to identify with a player because of how he plays, but I also like to be able to identify with a player with like what color he chooses and what skins he uses and all that lot. My favorite new unit in Heart of the Swarm is probably the Viper. Uh, it has really cool spells, Abduct has enough comedic value, it's, it's kind of funny to watch and really useful just pulling claws into your army or whatever. I love the speed medevac purely because of its boost ability. Uh, I'm a player that relies on multitasking. Um, while I'm a smart player, I've always been very good at playing around the map at multiple different locations and such. The Viper really allows Roach and the new Speed Hydra uh, to be a viable composition in just about every, every single matchup. Blinding Cloud, pretty reminiscent of Dark Swarm from Brood War, um, has also a very powerful and very useful ability. The reason I like it is because it's very reminiscent of the Defiler. Um, I like the risk, I like that it's expensive, I like that it's fairly fragile. It's kind of a unit that's allowing Zergs to play a little bit more aggressive than they uh, were potentially able to play in Wings of Liberty. The speed boost on the medevac currently, um, if I'm running a medevac to a base and I see five stalkers there, I cannot drop usually, whereas now I can have three medevacs going to three different locations and no matter what I see I can still drop and make something happen. There's always going to be a need for RTS and StarCraft has just been the pinnacle of RTS for many, many years now. You never have a chance to breathe. You don't have a chance to think. It's all instinct. It's all it's all to these single individuals. RTS has always been a staple of esports. Um, a lot of that's just because of how good Brood War was, but it is a really fun type of game to watch. One on one, this is solo. You can't blame anybody else. It's no teammate to blame for any mistake that's made. It's totally you. If, if you see a well-controlled late game Protoss Zerg or Terran army, 
you look at that and you say, well, that's a thing of beauty. And I think Heart of the Swarm has diversified the multitasking and raised the bar, so to speak, with how, how level or how high of a level a player can play at. And I think we're once again going to kind of re-enter that field of, oh my gosh, this person's an artist or a, an athlete, as opposed to we're Lord Investor again. StarCraft 2 has been kind of the driving force in esports for a while now. Let's say, well, it came out three years ago. And in that time, StarCraft 2 made a huge bang on the community, on the scene, on esports in general, for every, for all the